What's up guys, your boy Pat. Welcome to the next episode of the Hollow Down Cigar Lounge Podcast. Back this time again is our old friend Whoop. What's up, fuckers? If you've watched this before, this is not your first time. You will recognize he helped us bring in a, a new year, and I think Thanksgiving last year. I think that's what we did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's right. Um, badass shows. If you haven't watched them, go watch them. I know they're episodes five and seven because I've referenced that to so many people. <laughs> so I know the episode numbers. A couple of guys that have come on since then. That's, in fact, one of them, the guy that was here last time, that's what caught his attention is he saw your episodes. Like, Dude, I want to do that shit. <laughs> so, all about it. Um, so, glad to be back up here at your abode. Um, love this place, man. Probably going to say that every time. <laughs> <laughs> so. My fortress of solitude. Fortress of solitude. So, I, I just moved, so I'm still getting a little kind of new setup in the backyard, rolling on the back deck. I'm not sure how we're going to do that yet, so. But uh, it's nice to come out here and kind of chill. And the weather, fantastic today. Yeah, it has been balls hot for the past two, three months. <laughs> Dude, I think um, real, man. our last episode I did, and it was the coolest day. I mean, by the time I'm done, like, I'm just drenched in sweat. There's one camera angle I couldn't even use anymore because it, like, we were just soaked. <laughs> I was like, that looks a little rough on yeah. camera. It is so hot right. right now. The governor has put a ban on cutting grass. Jesus. A statewide ban on cutting. You can't bush hog. You can't cut grass. Didn't know that are, one. Yeah. Mowers are, are, are causing sparks hitting rocks. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad because I need to mow, so I'm glad stupid. I didn't. Of course, I see people mowing, but as soon as I do it, they're going to find my ass. Yeah, because, you know, you, know <laughs> you got a company, so they're going to come <laughs> after you. They're going to come after me. So, um, today's kind of a cool day. Um, kind of glad you get to be a part of this, so... Some stuff to introduce to you guys uh, here in a little while. But first things first, it's a cigar talk podcast, so we got to light the cigars, right? Oh, yes. So, first thing, um, the cameras are far away, so this doesn't show up. I'll put a picture of this because I have this picture. So, this is the Dissident Block. If you don't know about Dissident yet, we're going to talk about it as the show goes on. But the first thing before you can have a show is you have to cut and light your cigar. So, this is a box pressed Toro. A little bit of a breeze, so bear with us as we light these behind the counter. No secret magic going on, we're just blocking the wind. Really easy draw. I like that. Best part of any cigar is the first draw. Wind kicked my butt lighting this though. It's my fault. I like the wind's my fault, but I'm gonna own it anyway. It's my wind. <laughs> it's your wind, your property, your problem. So let me read this before I kind of ask you what you pick up on this. I could do every time. Normally I've been reading off Cigars International. This cigar, the least I have found, is not on their website. So I'm going to read it. A little uh, information. This is just coming from Cigar Federation. So they've got a long story about Dissident. I'm not going to go that far. I'm just concerned about the flavors. So... This one is an Ecuadorian Maduro wrapper and a binder. Your fillers are more of your traditional Nicaragua and Dominican Republic. It's got a complex, full-bodied, more of a medium to full strength. Anticipated notes include brown sugar, some leather, coffee, black pepper, cedar, and a little bit of either cocoa, cream, or caramel. That one's kind of up for interpretation. But either way, I definitely taste the uh, the spice and the, the coffee. I can taste the leather earthiness. Yeah. It's not like that last earthy cigar we tried. Uh-huh. This one's good. I like this. This has uh, that wind, man. 
I can even get my foot to toast. And I promise this is not an attribute to the cigar. I have smoked many of these. Love them. I'm not having any problem. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just a little <laughs> bit of a draft right here. I'm blocking a little bit for you. That's what it is. I'll tell you, this... I, I think uh, one of the last podcasts... Um, it might have been when I was up here with you or something like I was actually talking about this um, this incredible cigar lighter I've had. It was a Vertigo. I think it was an Intimidator. It was a quad tour. So I had for five, six years. Couldn't beat it. A couple, couple days later, it died. Dude, every time I get a torch lighter, I use up that one fill, mm-hmm. and it never will fill again. Every single torch. I bought Zippo torches. I bought all kind of torches. Once they're done one time, it will never fill back up. I don't know if I'm just doing something wrong or what the hell. Well, see, I I would say this, but I've played with this on some of yours. You know, some people have an issue if they're not purging the extra air out between fills. But we literally sit here and purged one for you, and it still wouldn't, it still work. wouldn't work. So. Yeah. That's I can't. I can't even. I can't even like blame operator error on this uh, one because we've tried. I don't I know what it old is. Old school. Got you know the old lighter fluid with the zip phone. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I just did that. Works and uh, man, I should have brought this. So uh, on my last cruise, we kind of ran into some stuff, and and I definitely take this. This last cruise. My last cruise. First world problems. First world problems. Next to her book. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it was just about three months away. Excited. <clears throat> so, the cruise ship is actually what got me into torches before. Like, I used to use them with a Bic or a Zippo when I first started smoking. That is very difficult to light on the side of a cruise ship. <laughs> I would actually go into, the, like, the shower outside around the pool <laughs> just to get the, the block. So, um, however, I learned very recently about a new tool... And if I'd have thought about this, I would have brought it. It uses, turn my phone off. It uses like a vape mod, but instead of like the actual atomizer up top, comes off and there's another device that screws onto it that's literally like a mini barbecue grill. So when you hit it, it literally just heats it up. Huh. Kind of like an old school car cigarette lighter. Yeah, yeah. That's what it reminds me of. And you put it on the end of it for like 10 seconds. Dude, that thing's amazing. Oh, damn. I forgot. Like, I ran across it somewhere. I think somebody in some Facebook group said like something those, about it. like the rechargeable, like the tack lighters and all that, the, the USB, but they're so little. The they tips, are. you can't light a cigar with it. Now, it's great for lighting a fire or something. Right. But you, but you can't do crap you might, with a cigar. You might have to bring it next time I come up here because you might, it might intrigue you enough. And it doesn't really matter what vape mod you got. Like, I had an old one that I... Because I haven't really been vaping much as much. I don't vape ever. Um, but you know, you can get just the a basic mod for dirt cheap, and then you're just then you're just rechargeable or batteries or whatever. Yeah, I don't vape. I felt the touch of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Never know what you're gonna say up here. <laughs> ever. So. My coffee's got cold. Crap. It's that breeze. Yeah. So we got a pot up here. Instant, instant top off. So, why not? Let's do it. See, this is how you know it's not 100 hell degrees. We're able drinking coffee outside, and we're comfortable. Yeah. No Black course. Rifle, of course. Same as last time we're up here. Not sponsored. We just love the freaking hell out of it. Damn right. Damn good coffee. Good old murdered out, and some uh, coconut cream, moon pie, moonshine from the Tennessee Shine Company. Pretty little freaking little good. Little. Yes, this is. I'm, I'm just, I put a little too much in last time, so I'm, I'm balanced out again now. He said it was good, man. I poured. I was like, I'm just going to put a little bit. Don't. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, first thoughts on the cigar, I'll ask you again later. You did what? I said first thoughts on the cigar. I'll, I'll ask you some more later, but what do you... First thing I noticed was the easy draw. I like that. I'm not having to try to suck my brains out. <laughs> And it, that's a real good draw. I like the flavor. I like the, the leather. And most of all, I like the way it looks. I like the square. It, it's, that's unique, and I like it. Yeah, there's a uh, box press is starting to become a little bit more popular, but not everybody does it right. I've seen some that like end up cracking around the corners because they're not done well. Yeah. This, I've had many of this specific cigar. Every single one has had a uh, 
very good appearance to me. Constructed well, but yeah. I definitely agree with you on the uh, on the draw. Yeah, they're not. It's an easy apart. draw. It's it's an easy draw, but the fire is staying in there. It's not falling out. It's not going out. I, I like I like it a lot. Mine will get there. I had a, a rough start on the light, but you know it's a wind issue. But it flavor is great, and I can taste that the leathery earthy it's not so earthy that it's not good <laughs> you know <laughs> i won't since we're talking about this cigar i won't say the name of the other one but uh oh, God, that's we um <laughs> the only episode so far that we did our best to not completely trash a cigar on video <clears throat> and it was very difficult because it it talked about having an earthy flavor and i think you said it we kept repeating it that it tasted like a grave yeah. It had no flavor. It tasted like you just went to the cemetery and shoved some dirt in your mouth. It was, it was horrible. It was horrible. Um, so I'm not gonna retrash the name of that brand. We did it once. That's <laughs> enough. We're gonna. But you know, sometimes you have earthy and it's and it's a little too much. And I, sometimes I think that's their caveat to like, oh, just raw tobacco that we didn't do anything with. Yeah. But then you have this. I like tobacco. actually has flavor. Yeah, I'd like to try some different ones of theirs. So I wonder if they have anything sweet. You know, I like the, I like the fat bottom berries. Mm. I like the sweet stuff. I wonder if they have anything. So, Sin can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we'll introduce her in a minute. But I think, um, I don't think they have any that's straight up as sweet as that one. Well, I don't think anything's as sweet. I don't think I anything's going to be sweet. But they, they do have several blends, and she's been working on some other ones. Um, kind of, you know, varying profiles. Um and I don't want to say too much because I plan on actually reviewing several ones along the way. Yeah, so, yeah. But uh, they, they do have several different blends. Um, younger company in the world, especially the, the rebrand uh, that was done in the last few years. But there, there's several that I think you would like. Actually, I mean, personally, I, I, there's only a couple cigar brands that I can say this next comment. They're one of them so far. They don't have one I don't like. Yeah. So... You know, even some of the best companies in the world, like Placencia and Perdomo, there's some that I'm like, I love this one, but that one's kind of... Yeah, yeah, I actually like all their so far. Everybody's got something you're not going to like. Everybody. So, I'm sure at some point it'll happen, but so far, you know, I like it, but good stuff. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I can taste the, the spice, the pepper, the leather. I usually struggle to taste the chocolate, so when I do, it's kind of, woo! But I, I, I can taste some sort of cocoa cream on the back end, which is probably helps it from being like a just overblown pepper bomb. Could be the moonshine. It could be the moonshine. <laughs> Very well, it could be the moonshine. <laughs> but, you know, they say it's in there. I can I can feel it. So, I'm not going to do a full history lesson, but, you know, if you don't know about Dissident, uh, it's a brand that I found few years ago but hadn't really tried until uh, about the last year or so um, being completely honest about it it's not a brand that I followed before I never heard of it until today a lot of people haven't but I'm impressed and <laughs> I'm definitely impressed you know it was a company that started didn't didn't take off the right way new owners came in it's a Sin Coburn to face her and her husband Josh they, they took care of it and have begun curating it and doing some new blends, doing some new branding, doing some new styles. Um, very punkish brands, you can see the logo. Some of them you'll actually see like their lightning bolt in the back. Um, I forget which one, I think, well, I think it's the Molotov. Um, and yeah, it's looked, it's got a pigtail, so it looks like it's, <laughs> like it's a bomb. She's got her face on the actual band, like just real punkish, just trying to be raw and direct. And they have changed their flavors, and I started seeing the hype come back. So went and got a sampler of them to try them. Dude, kind of like you first first impression. I was, I was all about and it. Are these sold in stores? Are they special order or what? Um, they were special order. I'm starting to see them in some stores. Um, they are having the good problem of production because everybody is learning about them and wanting them. <clears throat> so. There is a lot of online purveyors that are starting to sell them. Um, some of your local BMs are struggling to get product because they are selling so efficiently. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've been ordering them online the last few times I've got them. I have not seen them in any of our local stores yet. 
So, um, of course, you know, we don't have a, unfortunately, we don't have a massive cigar market here. So, we'll be on the end of the list getting them here, but, yeah. you know, pretty much have to go to, go to Texas or order or it to New Orleans, or New Orleans somewhere yeah, away. They, yeah, where they actually have cigar bars and stuff. Which, we've got a new one that, uh. Out in Southern Loop that I've been told to try. I haven't tried it yet, but I've had a couple of the scuba guys have said that it's pretty good. So I'm going to try it out because so far I've been going to Texas to have a good cigar lounge experience. So. I haven't had one since I was in Texas in the 90s. And on 6th Street in Austin, that was the last cigar bar I went to. I mean, that was a long time ago. There's a, it's a really good one uh, in Longview, Tobacco Junction on the Loop. So they've got several stores, but that one on the Loop, it's one of the biggest humidors in East Texas that they're also expanding. They've got a a, uh, a members lounge in the back that they're also expanding. You, for the same reason I do, would get full uh, free lifetime membership. Oh, really? Cool. So you don't have to pay to go to the lounge. Oh, yeah. Um, I meant to tell you about that. I just recently learned about that because I kept putting off going to membership. I'd just pay the visitor fee and then some lady caught on and told me. Oh, um, and then I think if you bring a guest with you, it's like three bucks. They have coffee and some drinks and some liquor back there that's included. Oh, yeah. So TVs, recliners, oh, badass. Oh, so, that. yeah, I'll hook you up on that after we're done. Yeah. So, that's, that's cool. But, but yeah, so Dissident Brand, if you don't, if you haven't heard about them, you don't know about them, I recommend already looking them up. So I'm kind of jumping the gun. I know I usually do reviews and then talk about it, but I've smoked most of their cigars, if not all of them at this point. Love them all. I believe you would enjoy them, but this block is probably my favorite. Um, you know, this thing is staying lit, and I'm not drawing on it constantly either. You know, a lot of cigars, it, you have to constantly relight, relight. Right. Relight. This one here, no problem at all. So much for turning my phone off, like I said I was going to do. Yeah, so uh, that's that's a tale of, one, construction. It's well rolled. It's not too tight or too weak. And the tobacco was aged properly slash stored properly. So, and I'm not just talking about me storing it before I brought it over. The way it was stored while it was aging, the way it was stored in transport at the, you know, the, the vendor. So the community level stayed appropriately. So it's just, yeah. but a lot of it is just construction, the tobacco they're using. It's, it's fantastic. But yeah, so why are we smoking a dissident cigar today? I told y'all I had a cool little bit of information. So... As you see, uh, depending on where I'm at in the camera, some one of these two corners, um, you'll have our logo, but you'll see the Cigars for Warriors logo, which we sponsor as well. Well, I guess partner is more the pro uh, appropriate term, because that is a donation, um, and we'd introduce that in one of our first episodes, and uh, we actually have a direct partnership with Cigars for Warriors, oh, no. so yeah. So I do drives for them. In fact, we have a current drive going right now. It's the end of September. Um, I've had several of the, the viewers send me cigars. A couple have sent me money. I bought cigars. So since we don't have a local distribution center or drop-off center here, I'm pretty much doing it through the podcast. The place uh, over there on 80, the cigar shop. Right yeah. Do they do it now? Yeah, that's where I got the idea was from them. You know, I asked them once, and it must have been somebody new, because they didn't know what I was talking about. Yeah, that's, that's where I got that. Okay, cool. Yeah, right there by Chili's. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I got that. Okay. Yeah, that's where I found So at least we have one. They just aren't, <clears throat> maybe they're not doing as great of a job, because I'd asked them once, because I thought maybe you had found somebody local, but yeah. must, maybe it was just somebody new didn't know yet, well, which is fair. You can do it yourself, though. So, um, I've had, you know, viewers will send money and tell me what cigars to get if they care, or how many cigars to get, or what to do with it. Oh, that's cool. Um, I've had several packages come in. Guys are sending me cigars. I store them, and then at the end of the drive, I'm pushing them. That's neat. So, yeah. Um, probably got about 50 cigars sitting right now for donation. Well, I mean, so they just distribute it themselves when it gets over there? Whatever. Yeah, so um, what I'm doing is I'm just sending them, um, which is pretty much what all the distribution center or the drop-off centers do, is I'm sending it directly to Cigar Shores and letting them know. So letting them do it. I take pictures of um, I take pictures of everything, put them on the group for accountability. Cigar Shores does it to every donation they get. They take a picture and post it, so then I can share it. So anybody that's donating has accountability. They're going where they're supposed to. 
So, considering we don't have a center, I felt that was a very appropriate way to do it. Yeah, yeah, we have. So, back when I was in, 100 years ago, we uh, actually, <laughs> we actually wrote Copenhagen on the back of an MRE uh, package, right? a cardboard package, because we couldn't get any snuff or any nothing over in the desert. And they sent a huge crate of Copenhagen t-shirts, I mean, bumper stickers, everything. We put bumper stickers all over Saddam Hussein's pictures of nice. everything. Any tank we went by, we put Copenhagen stickers on it. It was cool. That's they, awesome. They, they took care of us pretty good. I mean, they, cigar companies, well, sorry, tobacco companies are usually pretty good at taking care of it because because we're fueled on nicotine and hate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and enough it, caffeine to kill a rhino. <laughs> Shit. <that's>, I mean, <clears throat> speaking of rhino, black coffee. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's more of a partnership. You will start seeing a new logo, and that is the Dissident logo. So as of this episode, we are officially sponsored by Dissident Cigars. I just turned you off. Quit ruining my show. Cell phones, man. How many volume buttons do I have to hit to turn this thing on? Apparently 16. Alright, now the whole thing's off. So, we are officially sponsored by Dissident Cigars. And there's going to be some things come down the line with that. But if you don't know about this company, you definitely should go do, your, go do some little bit of research beyond what I've said. Um definitely buy their cigars and i would tell you that whether they were a sponsor or not which is actually kind of why we linked up with them because i fell in love with their cigars so uh they instantly jumped into my top list of cigars to enjoy for sure well you don't want to promote them you don't like exactly i mean unless they're paying you really well yeah (laughs) that is not the case here i'll put that out there we we made that very clear that this was um not no money's um, changing hands. Th- this was not a money-based sponsorship. This is enjoyment. This is a partnership. This is social media purposes, um, helping each other build as we as we grow, as they grow. So, um, this is not them paying me to drop their name. This is us reaching out because she likes the idea of the podcast. We love the cigars. It is a very mutual understanding agreement, and with that, we are also introducing a new segment of the show called a dissident disruption what that will be nobody freaking knows <laughs> it's going to be different every show it may be some news cigar related it could be some off the wall freaking dumb shit that i saw in the news yesterday something that i think is just random off the wall half retarded half funny i don't know i figured it fits the bill of not knowing what the hell we're doing so uh, that's pretty much it. Just winging <laughs> this shit. yeah i mean the best shows we've had is once we just started talking about shit <laughs> <laughs> when I start ranting about Democrats. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you though, uh, before we get into this disruption bit, we made the joke the first episode where you kind of went off and you're like, oh shit, should I have settled on air? And then we're like, we made the joke that either one, if the show gets canceled, yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> I'll tell you, some of the highest viewed shows that I have are the two with you. No shit. Because people keep sharing the shit out of it. <laughs> It's like, well, that went the other direction. Well, hell, I mean, you know, I, I just simply say what everybody's thinking. You know, I mean, that's that's the bad part about the world yeah. today. Nobody, you, you've got all these keyboard warriors, you know, that get courage behind keyboards but won't say jack shit to your face. Facts. You know, back when I was a kid, I mean, you know, hey, you, you didn't like somebody, you freaking told them. Right. You know, I mean, hell, to their face or you bust them in the mouth, one of the two. Yeah. Right? And then, you know, it was over with. Now, oh, oh shit. I'll tell you, I got some, some, a couple of my best friends started as a fight because we disagreed with each other had a couple knocks came back and realized later like one of the other of us was like okay we, we were a little fucked up my bad but hey good looking out good standing up and guess exactly. what we're freaking friends you know we didn't go front trying to kill people or nothing like that and i won't get off press on that charges, target press know. charges like we had a moment shit man my bad yeah you can't take <laughs> an ass whooping like a man anymore you know no. just take your ass whooping going too many participation trophies going around oh. <laughs> I won't get off on that topic. Maybe the next time we're together, because that's a whole that's a whole thing in itself. That's this. The, but uh, this is the nation now is because of participation trophies. <laughs> but you know, the parents telling them you can be anything you want to be. No, you can't. No, 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 you can't. Everybody's got their niche in life, yeah. and you know, the world needs ditch diggers too. 
and you know like being a punk rock brand right and you know it's a dissident episode dissident is growing because they're accepting of everybody i am and follow me with this i am accepting of everybody but i don't think everybody can do everything you know so that's not me being disrespectful to anybody that is just the way i feel everybody has a place everybody can join in anybody can be a part of this family i'm just going to recognize there's things that you can do that i can't do yeah. for shit. oh yeah i mean i'm never going to be an <laughs> epic athlete <laughs> obviously it ain't gonna happen right you know yeah. so no i mean you know hey you people want to be whatever they want to be i don't care that doesn't bother me i don't give a damn what you do in the privacy of your bedroom or wherever the hell it i, I don't care right what the only time i have a problem is when it's shoved down my throat you know it's like I, no do your thing man but don't expect a freaking parade for it I right mean, we we can believe completely different things yeah. and still be Co-exist. friends acquaintances co-workers whatever the case is exactly Exactly. You know, and you there's be a corn dog and smear mustard all over your neck and ass. I don't care. I don't give a shit. I mean, I've, I've heard really... you say that hundreds of times, and it's still <laughs> impressive. I mean, seriously, I don't give a damn. I mean, but don't come over here and want me to lick the mustard off of you and accept it. it ain't gonna fucking happen. You know, it's not gonna work. Oh, so many things I could say, but I won't. <laughs> but anyway, because I've personally gotten sidetracked about 16 times because it's what I do when we start talking. Um, first dissident disruption and i think it's a badass way to introduce one the disruption uh bit two dissident cigars and three this entire sponsorship by a personal video to you as the hollow down cigar lounge family from sin kobo and herself watch this What's up to everybody in the Hollow Down community? My name is Sin Coburn. I am the owner of Dissident Cigars, and I just wanted to give a very warm welcome to all of you. I am looking forward to being a sponsor of this podcast. This community is all about supporting one another, and I am here for it. And I am super stoked to be here and to be a part of this community. I am excited to be on future podcasts and just support you guys and everything that you are doing and now a proud sponsor of your podcast proud sponsor of the hollow down podcast and for those of you that don't know dissident is a punk brand what does punk mean punk is all about accepting one another and living in your true self and being who you are. What is a dissident? A dissident is being uniquely you and accepting one another for what we look like and the way we live our life. And I have a feeling that this podcast is going to be no different. So I am so excited to be a part of this community and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Are you a part of the dissident family yet? Well, you should be. So come on, I'll welcome you into this family. Let's enjoy some great cigars. And you might be seeing my face a little bit around here. But I'm gonna be super stoked to watch you guys and to be a part of this community. Catch you soon. Ciao! Punk is being dissident as fuck. See ya guys, how about that for a starter? So, a uh, personal welcome from Sin Coburn herself from Dissident Cigars. Um, as she said, we're going to try to work on in the future, getting her on. Um, most of the time she is in Nicaragua. So obviously it'll be some, some video style, whether we bring her on the show, um, you know, have her over here in the screen as we talk, something like that. We will figure that out. And she comes to the States every once in a while. We might can pull that off down the road, but, um, obviously she doesn't live where we do. So stay gone. It's a shit show here. (laughs) Stay gone. Who said you made the greatest choice ever going over there? <laughs> but um, so, but there's gonna be some good things coming. Um, we are super ecstatic to have our partner with the podcast. So um, we're gonna leave that open for interpretation as things grow, as things happen. Um, you will see their logos around here. Um, obviously, I'll be blasting their name um, periodically. Still gonna review other cigars, so it's not a dissident only. Everybody likes other cigars. Companies are supportive of each other. Even your rival cigar companies, that's how they grow because they support and compete with each other. 
um, just like any other industry product you've got. So competition is good. Conversation is better. So, um, but we're, we're glad to have her on board. Um, I think it's pretty freaking cool. So figure no other fitting way to start the dissident disruption style than with cool. the owner of dissident herself. That's cool. That was cool. So cigar still holding true for you? Still burning, dude. Still burning. Still burning. Mm. I can oh, tell. I want to show you something. Yeah, go for it. I have a tactical, which I like my tactical stuff. If you can't be tactical, be tactical. So, <laughs> this is you a definitely tactical are. cigar holder. It's got a little dehumidifier in it. Came with a, uh, a sniffer. It's pretty cool. Got that off of my favorite place to shop, Timu. Timu. Not a sponsor, but... It's a great place to save money and get all kinds of cool shit. All kinds of stuff. And I'll tell you, uh, I've got some things from Timu. And when they first started, I thought they were going to be like another Wish. Half the stuff is garbage. Now, some of it is because it's cheaper stuff. But as a company-wide, I have not had an issue. The only thing I've had that broke, the post office broke, whether on accident, I don't know. But I've had a couple things I've returned that they handled. A couple of them, they were just like gonna cost us more to ship it back just keep it here's your refund throw in the trash whatever um so their customer service is, is quick it's on point the app is easy dude i have bought so many tools it's unbelievable we use them all the time on the construction site i have not bought bought tools yet dude it, it they're good brands i mean good quality dirt pennies on the dollar cheap i mean it's insane how cheap stuff is. i bought all my tactical stuff there i mean you can get everything from Mobile four body armor to uh, uh, ear wax trimmer. I mean, it, it's it, it's insane. Kipper got a Snoop Dogg elf on a shelf. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. She's got her own team blue account now, which is freaking dangerous. That is dangerous. Yeah, yeah. I, I come in all the time. Girl knows too much. She, she's gonna, she knows what to look for too. Dude, I come in the other day and she decided to redecorate. So she bought rhinestone <laughs> faceplate covers for my plugs and put them in my bathroom to surprise me. <laughs> Such a kip thing to do. <laughs> yeah, and then she bought an Orby gun and uh, ambushed me. Had me locked in the house. Wouldn't let me out of the house. That's that's freaking amazing. <laughs> that's worth it. Yeah, the Orby gun. You got awesome. your uh, security camera footage for this? <laughs> no, I don't. Actually. But it's, it's good, man. It's good. She's already planning on ambushing the kids that come roll my yard during homecoming. So Nice. Yeah. We're getting our ghillie suits and everything from Timo. So we'll be laid out in the bushes waiting on our little asses. <laughs> Love it. <clears throat> Speaking of security camera footage, um, yesterday actually, and I kind of put this on Facebook, so uh, I will not say location. It's a grocery store yesterday. And they're in the middle of shift change. So, you know, at that time, on top of already having staff shortages and no checkout lines, shift change is worse, right? So you've got self checkout, and you actually had. Unlike the big box store that we all complain about, they actually had three people over there helping everybody work. It was fantastic. But then you had two checkout lanes that were open while the other two were counting their money down. So, of course, you can't do anything. They got to stop to count their money. It just is what it is. So, huge lines. I mean, waiting in line, but I had to get some stuff, so I dealt with it. And, and I'm going to use ethnicity descriptors only so you understand who is who. That's the only purpose. So, there's a Filipino lady that kept going to the lanes that had nobody in them and then would start this big scene ranting and raving because nobody was at the checkout line. Like, and one guy turned and was like, lady, there's lines. Just, just join a line like everybody else. Well, after about 20 minutes, I guess she decides she's waited long enough. She goes to the other line, goes all the way up, and with her cart, it wasn't like she had like a gallon of milk or something. She had a full cart. Goes up next to this African-American lady and just stands right by her. And she turned to her, she's like, ma'am, can I help you? Do you need something? She's like, oh no, I'm just in line. She's like, ma'am, the line's back there. Shit you not, she's like, um, I'm Filipino, I deserve it more than you do. <laughs> and she's like, uh, excuse me? She's like, uh, we're in the grocery store, nobody cares what we look like. Oh, God. See, and so... I miss all the good stuff, man. I, I mean, I, but the, the punchline. Wishing I would see some shit like this, just an ass clown somebody. So, 
I, I kind of started watching because the, the, the second lady starts yelling her voice because the Filipino lady keeps getting in her face. And she's like, and we're all just waiting for a fight. Like, they call the, the supervisor security guards outside in the parking lot because he was handling somebody that they thought was panhandling. So they radio him. He starts coming in. And a couple of the employees, a couple other, you know, shoppers, we're all just trying to make sure this doesn't turn into a brawl. Luckily, the whole engagement stayed verbal. However... I say this as a very serious note to y'all because this lady's argument, the Filipino lady is in her face, closer than this, and she makes the comment after we after she has made threats to get off me, to don't talk to me like that, every word in the book. Her punchline was if you don't get off of me, I'm gonna call my husband. Ma'am, unfortunately your husband's not there at the store, so if you get knocked in the face, your husband's not gonna do anything for you. And then she proceeded to call her husband when the Filipino lady took an extra step in her bubble. She pulled her phone out this close and called her husband. And you could hear him like, I'm not there. If, ladies, as much as guys, and this this is a serious tidbit. Ladies, if, if you lack the confidence or don't think you have the knowledge to be able to protect yourself in a situation where you are alone like that, don't let your only defense be that you're going to call your man. Shoot me a message. This isn't what this podcast is for, but I've got many avenues that I can send you, direct you, teach you how to protect yourself or at least feel confident in yourself to handle those situations better than picking up the phone and calling somebody that's one, not the police, and two, isn't on property. So, but... I always tell people, calling 911, the cops don't magically appear when that happens. So until they get there... I'm going to give them a reason to take me to jail. I'm going to beat the brakes off some fucking you got to protect yourself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't care how fast response times are. Well, and in this town, you're lucky if they ever show up. No, that's true. <laughs> that's true. It's this place. Yeah. Yeah, the main the main reason people become cops in this town is they were picked on as a child. Yeah. I mean, seriously. That's fair. It's pretty fair. But, you know... Safety defense matters, so that, that's a whole other conversation, but, you know, you sparked my, my, my thought there, so. Um, Stay strapped or get slapped. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> the more appropriate version we cannot say on there, but everybody knows what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> everybody knows what we're talking about. But yeah, so, um, so I, I don't know what... Um, I don't know what all this this uh, dissident sponsorship is going to bring, but I know it's going to bring some good times. It's going to bring some good stories. Bring some good cigars. I can't wait to see what their merch looks like. I'm just going to be cool. They, they've, shirts they've, and stuff. I'm I know, um, and I, I wanted to order it in time to get here before um, we recorded this, but I didn't. Um, stupid simple, you know. Um, probably more my style at the moment. They're going to branch out, but like this type of hat and just have it's just solid black with like. You see the color profiles there, the red, black, and white, just a huge lightning bolt on it, real simple. I like it, looks clean. Um, they've got some other stuff they're working on, so uh, we'll definitely, I'll start posting a link to some of their merch once it starts kind of pushing out. So, um, I hope they do like some Velcro patches, stuff like that. I don't know what all they're going to do. Uh, I like that. So, um, all she all she said is they're, they're kind of working on some some more stuff, but you know, you don't want to tip the cow before it, before it gets out, so... Mm. Be fun to see what all happens with that, cause I mean, I'm a swag, I'm a merch guy. Yeah. I'll support people. You know, I got no problem paying for stuff that I think is cool, and you know. Yeah. I mean, I got so much crap I don't need just because it's cool. We even got merch for the, the podcast channel now. Oh yeah. Pretty pretty new. Yeah, I got uh some hats with the logo. Um, got some gaming mats. Got a couple different shirts. Got a hoodie. Haven't pushed it out long. I'll send you. I'll show you yeah. the link in a little bit. Yeah. Um, and still got some other ideas like you know Ryan would always say that you know regardless if you like it or not we'll still be here mm -hmm. so I got one the logo on the front and on the back it says that in quotes we'll still be here you know <laughs> that's funny somebody told me I wouldn't put it on a shirt so I had to put it on a shirt you need to get one that said if we're cancelled it's Luke's fault ooh <laughs> yes actually <laughs> actually you know what I'm gonna do that one that's <laughs> That's pretty legit. If we get canceled, it's Luke's fault. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so, um, Ron, or Johnny Bravo, as we like to call him, he, he got his hair cut, so he's not as, 
as as Bravo of a Johnny anymore, but really? he uh, our our schedules pretty he, much are now completely opposite. Is so. he liking his new job? Yeah, he loves it. Um, Where does he work? Is he out of yeah out of troop here? Yeah, yeah, he, he's here local, so um, so uh, it's where he put in for. He got it, so he stick there. But our uh, you know beforehand we had the same schedule, even if we were different days and nights. Now we are completely opposite. And I'm having a hell of a time getting with him, so um, I wanted him to hear today as we introduce this, because if you're watching the show, you know, he helped me start this, and first few were super rough and scripted, because we didn't know what the hell we were doing, and uh, then we just realized, um, hey, let's just talk <laughs> much more enjoyable. That's the easier way to do it. And, you know, I think I've probably said, I know I've said it to people, I think I've said it on the air, too, is a couple other shows that I like the most... Like Cigar Talk podcast, they're out of Abilene. Rob and Brian are my favorite. You never know what the hell they're going to talk about. They're two friends that know each other, that know cigars, and then sometimes they'll ramble about their cigars. Sometimes they'll the only thing they're going to say is what they're smoking, if they like it or not, and then they go off on God knows what. <laughs> but I'd sit there and listen to it almost every time. Man, I'll tell you what. I'm still recovering from COVID, my third round. We had COVID a couple weeks ago. Oh God! This round, this this new variant or whatever that, that you know the Democrats put on us to keep us from voting, <laughs> uh, it's it's pretty damn rough. I ain't gonna lie. It was it, it felt like a freight train running through my body. It it, it hurt. It freaking hurt. So some of the nurses at the hospital are saying we're getting hit twice because you're getting some of that new strain is coming. But like any good persistent virus, it's gonna change. We've also they're also seeing the original. COVID strain come back. Yeah. Problem with that is now that we're three, almost four years down the line from that's introduction, medicine adapts, medicine changes. So the tests changed to reference the new COVID strain. So they've been having people come in with the OG COVID that's not popping positive because they're using the new test. So it's there's been a delay in. Well, you know, the year that everything broke loose, all hell broke loose. Nobody had the flu that year because the flu test is exact same as the COVID test. So there was absolutely zero reported cases of flu in the United States. Yep. That is amazing as hell. Right. I mean, that is, that's, that's amazing. Because that, that base marker was exactly the same. Yeah. It's and, like, you know, as they've learned more, it's kind of branched out and got more specific. But that first year was... Oh, yeah. It was... Ah. Well, you know, from what I'm hearing and talking to people in the school system and government and stuff like that, they're talking... You know, mask by the end of the month, virtual next month, total lockdown December. So you know, it's an election year, of course. It's gonna they're gonna try to lock us down, but what, it's gonna take enough people standing up saying, you know what, fuck you, I ain't doing this crap no more. I mean, let your body build up immunity. You know, I mean, if you're a high risk, yeah, you need to go and right. shelter in place. On a personal hell, level, but, you know your own health, you know your own situation. If you have any compromised situations that you personally Feel the need to yeah. be protected. By all means, go for it. Exactly. But an overall, you know. Yeah. 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 And obviously, I got a uh, problem. With vaccine that. ain't it don't work. I mean, it's killing more than it's saving. I mean, hell, people take the vaccine, they still get COVID. I mean, what the hell? It's just it's it's mutating too fast. It's <clears throat> it's hard to, to keep your handle on it. And... <clears throat> Chinese did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? <clears throat> I'm not a scientist, so. I don't have personal proof they did or not, but you know what? I'm going to say that till the day I die because that's where it started. So here oh, we are. Shit. <laughs> you know. Well, I'm not a proctologist, but I know a piece of shit when I see one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, hell. Don't take a genius to figure shit out. No, where no. Where it comes from, well, hell. Man, you know. <sighs> There's a whole other political episode. We give ourselves t- topics to start for you know, next time. You never know. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so uh, outside of me catching the wind over here, because I keep getting that breeze around the corner, th- this is actually the first block cigar that I've actually had to relight. So I know y'all have seen me dip and relight a few times. I promise 100% that is not because of the cigar. He's playing with itself. Shh. I can't see it, man. <laughs> Don't ruin it. <laughs> but, um, I've probably, I don't know, I've probably had close to a box of these over the last few months and this is the first one that i have even touched up outside of user error yeah this one here there was one that i 
knocked a little too hard, my fault. Yeah. And this is just catching wind. So me relighting this is not indicative of the cigar whatsoever. I can tell you that. This is straight up just some 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 wind therapy gone wrong. But I'm I'm up for it because after all this high heat, I'm more than glad to have a breeze. And it's like midday right now, the hottest part of the day, and it's what yeah. what is Norm this like the 70s or something? Normally it's about 180 out here right now. Yeah. Just unbelievable. I mean, I finally just now need to mow, and I haven't. I think it was 12:30. I haven't had to mow in months. It's all brown and dead. Oh yeah, mine's crunching. The only part that's growing is the part a little bit of the shade of the house is protecting it. But well, we got our uh, cabin laid on for our Griswold Christmas trip. Heck yeah, we're done. Got that taken care of. And oh shit, I didn't, yeah, I didn't talk with. Uh, when we were up there last time, we bought land. Really? We bought land. Really? We bought ten acres in the Smoky Mountains. I know you had talked about looking at some. I didn't know yeah, you actually did it. We did. We bought two. We bought two five-acre lots to join. It's okay. It's got a uh, blacktop road going up that switched back driveways, blacktop, and then dug into the mountain on two spots: one for my shop, one for the house. That's badass. So over on the North Carolina side, uh, we're okay. about 15 minutes from Tennessee state line, an hour from Gatlinburg. Nice. So yeah, make your own wait. place to go to. Cannot wait to get the hell out of here. Be gone from this. God forsaken <laughs> meth lab from hell. It's more accurate than y'all realize. <laughs> shit. <laughs> if you think that one's just us talking shit, it's not. No. no, no. It, no. Louisiana it, it, is one of the greatest places if you want to make welfare a, a life goal. That's sad that it's so true and accurate. Yeah. But, you know. But, you know. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll start winding down this one. So, um, still going to sit here and finish this puppy. That's a fact. So, uh, mine just died on me. And that's the right, the right size right there, too. So, right down on its own. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, uh, it'll die with dignity. Well, I definitely enjoyed it. It's a great cigar, great time, great conversation. Um, a little patchy, but, you know, haven't been able to catch up because yeah. trips and apparently COVID and all kinds of other things. So, but yeah, um, thanks to Dissident for uh, becoming a sponsor. Um, obviously, this is a random as hell podcast. We talk about whatever. Um, as I've said before, if you got anything that you want us to review, you want us to talk about, whatever it is, send me an email. It's thehollowdown at gmail.com. If you got any random thoughts, um, I have referenced a couple emails in previous episodes, so I do pay attention to them. Down below, you'll have your links to our merch, have links to the email, and a couple links to Dissident that we're going to start including down there as well. So, as always, I want to thank you all for your time. Woo, thanks for letting us come back and hang out a little bit. Appreciate it. And uh, until next time, stay safe. Hollow down. <laughs>